is a continuation for our course on the Kinhank G1 streaming box. And today we're talking about how to speed up your device if it's running slow. So little tips and tricks that I've learned throughout the years to make it run a little bit faster. Now, if you enjoy this series, make sure to subscribe down below. And if there's something you wanna learn about your Kinhank box or any other Android TV device, let me know down below in the comments. So when we're talking about a slow device, there's a few things we need to mention. The first one we're gonna talk about is internet speed. Now there's two ways to connect to your Kinhank box. If we go into settings and go to network, you can see option number one, and this is Wi-Fi. Now people get confused with Wi-Fi because they think, oh, it's connected, that means it's gonna be fast. That's just not true. Now, one way to tell if this is the reason your device is running slow is looking at the different Wi-Fi signals. For instance, I'm connected to my main Wi-Fi and you can see the whole thing is highlighted in. This means I have a strong signal. Now, if yours looks something closer to this good Wi-Fi or this TELUS Wi-Fi, that means you have a weak signal. And this could be causing your device to lag and sometimes movies might be running slow. So now how can you solve this? Well, option number one to solve this is something called a Wi-Fi booster or a mesh network. I'm actually gonna tag my video right above here where I go over mesh networks. This is on one of my review channels, but I talk about Amazon's mesh network, the Euro, and it actually works really well. It's affordable, and this is going to increase your Wi-Fi signal all throughout your house. Now your other option, thankfully, the Kinhank also has a direct ethernet connection in the back. So what I wanna show you here is how different the speed is gonna be with the ethernet cable plugged in and without it. So we're gonna run a speed test with just the Wi-Fi, and then I'm gonna plug in the ethernet cable and I'm gonna show you the speed difference between the two. Starting with the Wi-Fi test, let's see what kind of speeds we're getting. Okay, so roughly 662 megabytes download speed. Let's go ahead and connect our ethernet cord. So I plugged in my ethernet cord and when we go back to network and internet, you're gonna see now unplug ethernet to use Wi-Fi. So as soon as you're connected to ethernet, it's going to switch and toggle that because it's the faster option or it should be. Let me show you. So let's go back to our internet speed test here and we're gonna go start again. Let's see what speeds we're getting. Yes, so some of you are probably confused why our download speed is so much less, even though I told you, hey, this should speed up your internet. Well, the actual ethernet the ports themselves on Android boxes typically cap out at 100 megabytes per second. Now, if you have a strong internet Wi-Fi connection, that is often a really good option for you, but ethernet is always going to be more consistent, and that's the key word, especially if you have a weak signal. So it's something to keep in mind. Ethernet is not always going to be faster, but it's sometimes more consistent, which is something to keep in mind. So the next thing I wanna talk about is storage. So we're gonna go back to our device and click on device preferences and go down to storage. So every Android box comes with a certain amount of internal storage. In this case, we have 27 gigabytes. It's actually 32, but the operating system uses up a certain amount. Now, as we use up storage, this can greatly slow our device down. You can see in this case, we have 25 left available. This device has something called free up storage where we can go inside and quickly clear cache. And I'm gonna talk about cache in a second, but we can also uninstall apps. And this is something I suggest doing. If you find apps that you aren't using, whether it's a version of Kodi or a paid streaming app that you don't use anymore, or these speed tests I downloaded, this can slow your device down if you have too many installed apps and not enough storage. So that's where we're gonna go into, if we go back one more time and we go to our app section, we can see all of our apps right here. Now, one important thing to do is actually force stop apps. So when we click on each app, you're gonna see a force stop option. Now this is when an app is open in the background and still running. If you have too many apps open in the background and running still, this can slow your device down. So sometimes you can download an app that force stops everything or just go individually with apps and go ahead and force stop them. This can actually greatly increase the speed of how your device is running because you don't have as many processes running in the background. 
Now, the other bit we have to recognize when we go into our apps is the clear cash option. Now, cash is not necessarily bad. In fact, sometimes cash data can help speed up your app because it's basically temporary saved data that helps your app run faster based on your previous settings. And there's a little bit more to it, but I think that's an okay explanation. So once, cleared, once your cache gets up to a certain amount where you start to see it getting like 80 megabytes, I usually suggest clearing it from time to time. You don't have to do this too often, but you can just go into your apps and clear any cache that is saved. Or we can go back to our device preferences, click on storage, click on free up storage, and we can quickly, quickly clear our cache right here as well. And that's also going to speed up our device a little bit. One other little trick I want to show you. If we go into our about section and we scroll down until we find our Android TV OS build and we click on it seven times, you're going to see it says we are now a developer. Now, if we click back one screen, scroll down, you're now going to see developers options right here. Well, developers options actually has a ton of different settings that we can check out, but I'm going to show you one of my favorite ones to change. I'm going to do a whole other video talking about the Kinhank developer options. So don't worry, there'll be another video to watch shortly. If you go to window animation, transition animation scale, and animator animation scale, we can actually turn this to off. And what you're going to see is how quick menus close now. You see how there's no animation in between us clicking? Watch what happens when we go to 10x. You guys will see what I mean. We go 10x and then watch this duration. You see that? You see how much slower that is? So turning this off is actually going to speed up that process. And although it's not technically speeding up our device, it's taking out some of the fluff, which makes our device at least look faster. The other thing we can do is scroll almost all the way down to the bottom until you find background process limits. Now this is the amount of apps that can operate in the background. So you can leave it on standard or you can have it just run one process at a time. And this can also speed up your device because it's running less in the background. You can also set it to none if you want as well, but that's totally up to you. So what did we go over in this video? We went over internet speed, both Wi-Fi versus Ethernet. We went over storage, how to clear your cache, how to force stop apps in the background, and uninstalling apps you're not using to free up storage. And lastly, we talked about developers options and some of the quick settings you can change. Now I'll be doing more videos in this series very soon, so make sure to subscribe down below and also let me know which Android or and also let me know which streaming device you want me to make a course for next. See you guys later.